Okay guys, today I'm going to talk to you about the importance of clearing out the clan castle as the first thing you do when you start your attack. Getting rid of the king and getting rid of the clan castle are very important. And I'm going to show you guys why. Sorry to pick on Tyler here, but um, this is like the primo perfect example of why you clear out the clan castle. So here's a base. Clan castle's right on the edge. Drop a barbarian out here and they'll come out towards it or drop an archer or two and then you kill them with some units. Instead what happened is the wizards came out, he dropped all his giants and the wizards doing their splash damage are gonna kill all these giants. All of them. And those giants would have made a huge difference later on in this battle. And then they got shot off on his wizards and killed some of those wizards. Now it's just wizards. Now all Tyler has is wizards to deal with all these splash damage attacks. The wizards need their meat shields in front. And he's going to pick up the one star, but that attack just went wrong because of the freaking clan castle troops. And they're an easy thing to deal with. At the start of every attack, you should be finding the king or the queen, or both, and the clan castle. You should be activating both of them. Bring some barbarians and archers for it. And then drop an archer or a barbarian or whatever so that they all get drawn over to away from the towers. And then you drop troops to kill them. Um, depending on what there is, you drop specific troops. Like, usually archers are really good at taking the kings and queens out, and barbarians are good at taking them out, too. Um, another good way of dealing with clan castle troops is lightning. Bring one lightning spell, activate the clan castle while your attack is going. You don't even need to do anything different. As soon as they pop out, drop a lightning right on top of their head. Um, who was it? So here's one by uh, Chad Connors where... He got kind of, it didn't go wrong, but he didn't do it right. Um, and even if, so here's, it's easy, you just drop something over here, it activates them, and then you drop something over here, they get brought over into the corner and then you kill them. Instead, they're going to go and they're going to sit behind this wall right here, and they're going to take shots at his giants. They're not going to really kill very many giants because he has a heal spell, and because his kingdom's over there. However, all the units now focus on these clan castle troops while they're under fire in the middle of the attack from everything, rather than dealing with them out of the way when nothing's really shooting at the troops. He gets through them, he loses his king, he loses a few wizards, he loses a few giants, but it wasn't nearly as bad as Tyler's. And I kind of think that's a little bit lucky, and it's a, his spell placement, his heal spells really helped. He might not have needed to drop those heal spells, though, if those clan castle troops weren't there. So, here's one that I'm very happy about. Um, Oni was nice enough to give me a level 2 dragon. And I had my clan castle uh, for defense. And I want to show you what happened, because it makes me very happy. It's nice seeing my clan castle troops actually do some work. So, I intentionally put my clan castle in the middle so it's harder to activate. Um... You have to you have to get through these defenses to activate it. Like that minion wasn't able to activate the clan castle. Um, to activate it, I would suggest dropping a hog rider right here. It'll go towards that defense. It'll live long enough to activate my clan castle. All he's using balloonians, which is balloons and minions, and it's a very good um, raiding strategy. It works very well. Balloons take out all the air defenses. Minions come in behind. And where this goes wrong is a dragon comes out of here and destroys all of these balloons and a few little puffs of its magic dragon puff stuff. And then, these minions are still cleaning this up. Um, but once the, all these balloons are gone, as you can see the splash damage is brutal on them. Uh, once all these balloons are gone, there's a couple of clouds of minions that just get one puffed by this dragon. Like, watch this. <laughs> gone. Gone. And this dragon lives to fight another day in my clan castle. And that was a fail. If he had cleared out that dragon, it would have been a different story. Um, because of the splash damage. It's the same when there's wizards in a clan castle. Now here it happens again. Someone attacks me. And this guy uh, doesn't deal with the dragon in time. He deals with it while everything he has is under fire. Ah, oh, still all the stuff from the previous attack. 
telling you, you got to get rid of the king and you got to get rid of the clan council. My king's under construction, being a lazy butthole on the throne, but he's going to level six, and this guy is just not dealing with him. He needs to activate him. He needs to shoot these down or get something over there. Um, and I intentionally made it hard to get to my clan castle for this reason. That lightning would normally take out normal clan castle troops if they're activated, but a dragon it won't. One of the reasons I really love dragons in the clan castle. Attack is going good. He's cleared the outer defenses. He's through the wall. He's got lots of giants, probably some heal spells for backup. And here comes Puff the Magic Dragon. Um, Wizard Towers are so brutal, the goblins. Puff the Magic Dragon's going to go to work on those giants. Oh, there goes half their health. And there goes the rest of them. That sucks. And now the dragon's just going to keep doing a little bit of work to these barbarians and uh, archers. And it's going to take him a while to take him out. And by the time he's dead, he has no troops left. Yep, that's all that's left. A couple of blasts from Lewis and Tower, done. Failed. He got nothing from me. But this costs way more than what he spent right there. And, um, yeah, that's my video.